So my last video seemed to spark something of a debate on human nature and it basically started to feel like political science class all over again where you have Hobbes and Hobbes basically believed that people were essentially bad and violent and there needed to be an authoritarian state with absolute power to control people. And then you had Locke who had a more benign view of human beings in the state of nature as he put it and that they came together in a social contract to enhance their security and secure private property rights and that sort of thing. And then you had Rousseau who basically thought that civilization was the problem and that humans were better off in the state of nature. And one comment in particular reminded me of the movie The Dark Knight, or particularly the Joker's attitude in The Dark Knight, because they said something to the effect of, once civilization collapses, you'll see humans' true nature. And that was kind of the Joker's point in The Dark Knight, is that you know there's these schemers trying to control everything, but if you introduce chaos and disrupt the system then you'll show how people really are and that in their panic one boat of people will blow up another boat of people in order to save themselves and uh, of course Batman is trying to defend Gotham and doesn't really think that human beings are that bad and kind of gets one of those you know I told you people weren't that bad moments at the end of the movie or towards the end of the movie um, but again, that of course is a movie, but I don't think we can really judge human nature, assuming there is such a thing, on the basis of how people would react in some sort of crisis situation in which they felt that their survival was threatened. I have a more gray view of people, I guess you might say. I don't think that people are inherently good or bad. They're largely what their societies and their circumstances make them to be. Uh, that said, I think that human beings are social animals, and we can see um, some evidence that social behavior is, is more evolutionarily hardwired by observing the social behavior of other animals who it's the general bias of human beings uh, that these other animals don't really think or reason the way we do. So to try and chalk up all human social behavior as some sort of rational process by which we we view our own self-interest and go, okay, well, it's ra you know we should rationally act socially because that's more um, you know that's more plays into our self-interest better. I don't I don't think that that case is as easy to make as it sounds, but because a lot of people pointed to this whole self-interest issue, I want to say that basically to address the people who said that the baker doesn't really go to the bakery and bake bread because he wants to or for the you know goodwill or for other people he does it for himself out of self-interest and again going back to my thesis that human beings are generally cooperative this whole scenario of a baker going to bake bread presupposes whether or not he's acting in his own self-interest in some sense it presupposes that people are generally cooperative, or at least that this person exists in a cooperative society. Because if somebody thought that the average person would just come along and take what they wanted by force rather than pay for it and engage in a fair and mutually beneficial interaction, then people just wouldn't bother to bake. Everything would be a, a you know, everyone for themselves, free for all, sort of like the way Hobbes described the state of nature. Instead, people are willing to go and bake bread in part because implicit in that scenario is a cooperative society and, and the general cooperative nature of the average person in that society. And it cannot just be reduced to, well, they're just doing it out of self-interest because it doesn't explain why they could bake bread at all. I also think that human beings are a fundamentally social species species because so much of human survival is tied into social based learning. If you were to drop the average person into the wilderness from modern civilization in which modern civilized skills like how to perform a transaction at McDonald's to buy their food is all they know, well they may figure out a few tricks of how to catch a fish or forage for food but they could also just as easily not eat 
eat the right plants, eat something poisonous, die of starvation, any number of things. And yet these sorts of skill sets, you know, this skill set, uh, which every person in a hunter-gatherer tribe would have had, the ability to identify the local plants, the ability to hunt, gather, fish, that sort of thing. Uh, those are all, those uh, survival skills really are passed on through social-based learning. And in modern society, people, unless they uh, uh, deliberately obtain those sorts of skills, do not have those because the, the, the social learning is focusing on modern technological society and the ways in which people survive and interact within the construct of that society. So people's very survival is dependent on their social knowledge, which is in turn bound up in the state of society and in what manner the society lives. Even many antisocial behaviors like robbing a bank is in a way uh, a reaction to society. There are no banks in nature to rob and uh, many of the um, discontents of society, many of the people who wind up uh, committing crimes and robbing banks, uh, in, in reality were in some way at, at some point in their life socially disenfranchised and so so again, these are there. I mean, many of our problems are themselves social problems. So uh, I, I don't think this is the be-all, end-all argument for the idea that human beings are are social creatures. But the fact that we are social creatures, sort of. Um, is is bound up in the fact that we are fundamentally cooperative rather than just being entirely out for ourselves and uh, people viewing antisocial behavior or a take from you know take whatever i want mentality as being equally acceptable options there seem to be a lot of people who just had this idea that humanity was on a precipice and about to collapse at any moment and that to me just it reminds me of religion what else can i say the end is nigh the end is nigh and again to go back to what i said in the first video i think in part it's because the media is showing a very biased view of the world show everything negative because that's what people respond most to and that's what gets the ratings other people pointed this out in and in quite insightfully i think um you you can't take the media's point of view, the news, and uh, just say, "Oh, this is you know, this is what's how the world really is. Uh, this is the picture of the world. Everything's bad." No, the picture of the media is everything's bad. The picture of the world is probably all sorts of mundane things you're not hearing about uh, that keep the world going. Lastly, I think there's something strangely altruistic about the fact that people are d dissatisfied in some way with the world because it's not a good place overall. Uh, it'd be easy for people to say, well, well, my life is okay, so who cares if there's wars on the other side of the planet? Who cares if there's all this social injustice? Um, I think that that even even in the more pessimistic people that there is that bright spot of well they may not like the state of the world but they dislike it for the right reasons and that's a step in the right direction because some people are just ignorant and or in denial about the problems of the world or they feel as many people feel you know in, living in a culture bombarded by negative media messages that everything's just hopeless or the end is nigh or that sort of thing and I think that that mentality is just something people have to get over so that they can work towards more constructive and, and long-term uh, solutions to humanity's problems. And I don't, I don't think that there's going to be any sort of utopia by the time I'm dead. Uh, even if they invented wonder drugs that allowed me to live to 300, I still don't think I'd live to see a utopia. But... It's the very idea that there can be progress and improvement that makes and make makes making an effort worth it. And it's only when we give up on trying to solve the problems that the problems overtake us and just that's that's when humanity really sucks, is when nobody even tries anymore to even acknowledge or solve the problem. So 
that's the end of the video. Have a nice day.